a sort of a wooden painting of what Du Jiang Yan's all about. Basically, it's a canal irrigation system. So this is sort of like the water coming down from the mountain and just, I guess, how it's uh, being controlled. I'm in to see the Du Jiang Yan, so the uh, irrigation system, which is a World Heritage Site. As you can see, all these people getting up to do their pictures. So water's always been um, an important element in uh, Chinese history and Chinese thought. Uh, according to the Yi Jing and Taoism, water is the most powerful element. Um, Taoists always point to how the rocks are hard, but how water is so continuous and over time it shapes the rocks and it shapes the canyons and it ends up um, uh, uh, eroding the, the, the hard power of like rocks. Um, yeah, and it's also been seen as uh, the sort of in, uh, intermediate, the, the, the power that, this, that heavens bring to the earth, right? The rains fall, and that's what makes the earth fertile. That's what makes the earth uh, 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 productive. And whoever has been able to sort of control water has been able to unify the country. Now this goes back to like an ancient, ancient emperor called uh, the Emperor Yu. And there's a saying in Chinese called Da Yu Zhi Shui, uh, which basically means that the big Yu um, controls the water. So back in the day, it was said that Emperor Yu had learned how to control the water. So he had learned how to control the floods and thereby increased yield and productivity in China uh, and thereby creating like the sort of first civilization. So in 256 BC, the governor of the state of Qin, which would eventually take over and unify China, uh, built this dam, built this uh, reservoir. I don't think it's just this dam, it's this whole system of canals that are going on here. And what this did was it was able to slow the floods and allow for the uh, plains of Sichuan to become more fertile and more productive. That, of course, allowed Chen to um, develop a strong state on the basis that he could then feed his army and feed his people and that they were basically, uh, they could avoid famine. Uh, and then, of course, that's what allowed him to gain power, the stability and the sort of security to then gain, power, uh, gain the power enough to be able to um, unify China. Throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia, this dam has been sort of uh, maintained and, and used by each dynasty. Uh, the Tang Dynasty, the Song Dynasty, the Ming Dynasty, the Qing Dynasty, and finally, of course, the People's Republic of China. Um, if we wanted to go even further, you could look at how the People's Republic of China has then built another dam in reminiscent of that, uh, which would be the Three Gorges Dam, which also sort of controls the floods and controls the rivers along, uh, controls the Yangtze River. So they say that this is a feat of engineering that's basically comparable to the uh, Great Wall of China. And it is probably true. Um, I mean, again, it's not just this dam, it's the whole irrigation system. Dotted along the hillsides of these canals, we find temples and religious edifices that seem to draw attention to the spiritual importance of water. Even the architecture in the town of Dujiangyan is built around the streams and rivers that run through it. They serve as civilizational idols, commemorating the importance that water plays in human life, enjoyment, and prosperity.
Du Jiangyan is therefore more than just a feat of ancient engineering. It is a shrine that pays homage to the significance of water in Chinese culture and civilization.